Hello and welcome to the TI Precision Labs for motor drivers on sinusoidal commutation of brushless DC motors. In this video, we'll discuss how a sinusoidal BLDC motor is constructed and commutated using sinusoidal commutation, how it's implemented using sensor and sensorless techniques, and the benefits and disadvantages of this method. In sinusoidal BLDC motors, windings for each phase produce a sinusoidal back EMF voltage. This requires a sinusoidally distributed winding in each phase. To visualize the sinusoidal distribution, consider the winding for phase A, where the number of turns per coil progressively increases away from the magnetic axis. When we spin the rotor by hand, the rotor magnetic fields cut the stator windings and generate sinusoidal back EMF voltage waveform. This back EMF waveform can be measured by disconnecting the motor driver from the motor and using a scope connecting from one phase to another. This slide shows how three phases interact to create a rotating magnetic field on the stator. The stator coils of all three phases are spatially separated from each other by 120 degrees and are driven with three phase sinusoidal currents, which are also separated in phase by 120 degrees. This results in three magnetic vectors which pulsate back and forth synchronously with their respective currents on their respective magnetic axis. The magnitude of space vector of all three phases are minimum during the zero crossing and maximum at the peak. If we add these vectors together, the result is a smoothly rotating magnetic vector as shown by the space vector plot. As far as the rotor is concerned, the stator looks like it is spinning at a frequency equal to the frequency of the sinusoidal current. How do we generate sinusoidal current? Ideally, we would like to drive sinusoidal voltages on the phases. The output voltage amplitude applied to the motor is developed through pulse width modulation so that the phase-to-phase -phase voltage is sinusoidal. When any phase is measured with respect to ground, the waveform is sinusoidally coupled with third-order harmonics. This encoding technique permits one phase to be held at ground while the other two phases are pulse width modulated. The average value of the pulse width modulated voltage looks sinusoidal in shape. In this slide, we are going to see how PWM signals are generated to produce sinusoidal output voltage on all three phases. PWM signals are generated using space vector modulation technique. With space vector modulation, we see the inverter as a state space machine with a total of eight states. There are six states or voltage vectors starting from V1 to V6, which generate voltages on the motor winding, and two states V0 and V7, which do not generate any voltage, and these two vectors are called null vectors. The six states are represented in a state space vector diagram with six sectors. The sector number is chosen and the switching times T1, T2, and T0 for all the three high side FETs S1, S3 and S5 are calculated based on the magnitude and angle of the phase voltage vector that needs to be generated. For example, if we want to generate a phase voltage vector in sector 1 with an angle of alpha degrees, we would spend T1 amount of time in voltage state V1, T2 amount of time in V2, and T0 amount of time in V0. Switching times T1, T2, and T0 of all the FETs in each sector are calculated using a sign lookup table and by taking rotor angle and duty cycle as inputs. With space vector modulation, we can generate sinusoidal voltages of any angle and magnitude. When we sweep the voltage vector from 0 degree to 180 degrees, we expect to see three phase pulse width modulated sinusoidal voltages as shown in the plots to the right. This slide shows the block diagram of censored and sensorless sinusoidal commutation. In censored sinusoidal commutation, we use position sensors such as encoders and resolvers that generate rotor angle as output. The PWM signal generator takes rotor angle and duty cycle as inputs and calculates switching times T1 
T0 and T2 of all six FETs to commutate the FETs. In sensorless sinusoidal commutation, the back EMF voltage and rotor angle is estimated by measuring the phase currents using shunt resistors and shunt amplifiers. In this slide, we are going to see how back EMF voltage and rotor angle alpha are estimated. When spinning a motor, we know the applied phase voltage U, which is the duty cycle times supply voltage Vm. We also know the inductance of the motor L, the resistance of the motor R, the back EMF constant Ke, and the electrical speed of the motor omega. What we do not know is the back EMF voltage, the rotor angle alpha, and the phase current I. We can solve this issue by adding a way to read the current of the phase. There are many ways we can do this. One way is by adding a shunt resistor. Using the shunt resistor in an ADC, the current of the phase can be read. This allows us to calculate the back EMF voltage and the rotor position using these two equations. We can find sinusoidal control in applications that require low noise, smooth, and efficient motor performance. The motor performance is very quiet because the phase current is purely sinusoidal without any higher order harmonics. Sinusoidal commutation is highly efficient for sinusoidal motors when the back EMF voltage is aligned with the phase current and produces low torque ripple. In terms of downsides, the sinusoidal commutation has higher switching losses compared to trapezoidal commutation. The speed and torque regulation for dynamic loads is poor as there is no feedback loop to regulate speed or torque. Sinusoidal commutation is complex to implement as it involves solving complex mathematical equations to estimate back EMF voltage and rotor angle. To find more motor driver technical resources and search products, visit ti.com slash motor drivers. Thank you for watching.